Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. We are so excited that you are tuning in with us. We want to say welcome to each and every one of you that are tuning in on tonight. And we are grateful that each and every one of you have decided to spend an hour or so and doing Bible study with us. What an awesome opportunity it is that we begin to share in the reading and the studying of God's Word. Thereby, we know how to conduct our lives in the way that honors him and is a blessing to our surroundings and to each other. You know, many times we want to be a blessing in our environment, but the blessing starts off by honoring God. If I honor God, then things around me will receive the blessing. And so it's a wonderful privilege that we have to share with you on tonight that you are able to join us. So go ahead, get your Bible, your pad, your pencil in. And if you're home and you don't, you're not doing a uh, 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 with the kids or something along those lines, I challenge you to sit down and focus. Sometimes we do internet church and we're busy, you know, but if you're not busy, you're not working or anything, you ought to dedicate some time to focus and on God's word uh, for an hour or so and study his word. You know, sometimes I try to listen to people while I'm doing other things and you miss things. So sometimes you want to focus, bring your attention in so that you can hear and study God's word on tonight. So we want to say welcome as you're coming in. Speak to everybody. Let everybody know that you're glad to see them. If you're here on the Facebook, uh, here in the sanctuary, go ahead and log in on Facebook, love on them and let them know that you're here in the Lord's house and become a part of our study on tonight. Welcome to those that are on YouTube. We want to welcome you. So all of our LTM members, all of LifePoint members, all of our visitors, we say welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you. And listen, let me just say this. I'm putting this a disclaimer out here, uh, just something that the Lord dropped in my spirit that I'm going to be doing Friday night. Friday night, the next two Friday nights are going to be something special, and it will be one of the only times that we will, for right now, open up the sir open up for you to come in this Friday night. This Friday night, <laughs> they don't know what this. <laughs> this now, now this Friday night. Listen, this Friday night will be for married couples only. Married and engaged couples only. We will have a time of teaching that will be streamed, but once I'm finished, we will cut it off and we will deal with things of in the in-house. The following Friday will be singles. You will come in and you, we will have our teaching. We'll cut it off and we will deal with Q&A. These next two Friday nights are going to be very special. So it's not that you can't tune in, but only married or engaged couples are in the house on this this Friday night and next Friday night we will deal with our singles. Amen. It's going to be this this Friday night is Friday night after dark is the theme. And then we're going to get the singles before dark. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> the singles get before dark. Man, people get after dark. <laughs> But yes, go ahead and just be 7 o'clock sharp. I'm going to get started. We're going to be here, and it's going to be wonderful. Uh, so get all of your married couples. And even if you're married, your spouse may be working or not be able to be here, go ahead and come and get the information and take it back and discuss it. And you will, uh, I'm, I know you'll be wonderfully blessed. All right? I'm ready to teach, and let's move on. All right, here we go. Romans chapter 12, let's get in it. We've been talking about small mind big gifts and high demand. And tonight I want to focus on having the faith to operate in your gift. I want to talk about that. Having the faith to operate in your gift. So in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through, uh, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 8 and I'm going to begin the reading of God's word uh, uh, with me. Uh, and I know uh, I'm going to see who, I know who want to be, a, I ain't going to mess with y'all. So who want to read for me tonight? They ain't scared. Hey, Amen. They all, you, you come right here and, and grab it because uh, I'm be everywhere today. All right, here we go. I'm starting off, and we're going to get it. It's going to get good tonight. Tell your neighbors, it's going to get good. 
All right, Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as he has, for as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are not are one body, one body in Christ, and every one members uh, of one of another. Having then gifts that are differing, tell everybody we got different gifts, different gifts. It's according to the grace that is given unto us, whether, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, our ministry let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, and he that giveth let him do it, this, do it with simplicity, and he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And uh, so I'm going to stop there because there's a whole lot going on. Now, I'm probably going to be going to be passing it around. Because I'm going to have y'all to get some different scriptures because I want to hit them all tonight. And the best way to hit them all is to make sure somebody there to remind me there's a scripture that you didn't read. Amen, somebody. <laughs> so it's going to help me out. All right. So we're going we gonna to work on it so I don't get lost. You know, I get lost. Y'all not get lost. All right. So let's talk. Are y'all ready? All right. So we, we've been talking out of Romans 12 because I'm, I'm going to hit a lot of things on tonight. And I want you to see this in Romans chapter 12, where we've been talking about we dealt with the first part of Romans 1 through 8. This whole concept right here deals with our salvation. Remember? OK. And then we dealt with Romans chapter 12. All right. I think it's through 15. It deals with our actions as it relates to how we live out our faith. So this is important. So in salvation is by faith, and this faith should translate to works. Okay? So you're not saved by works. You're not saved by works. You're saved by faith, but your faith should make you work. Any faith that don't work ain't faith or isn't faith. That's important that you understand that faith without is, there's no such thing as faith without works. There's no such thing. So if you say you believe God, then something should follow in this belief. Okay? And this is why the evidence of your salvation, not the evidence of your salvation is found in what you call faith or what you call fruit. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm really with God and God and I having this fellowship, then there is something that should come from the fellowship. Okay? This keeps you, and this is important that you have this, because this keeps you from being deceived. That's why God says, if you say you love God and don't love your brother, he say, then how dwelleth the love of God in you? You, you see the concept? So it's impossible to say you love God. That's what he's, he's putting up on the thing. And if you don't come down to love your brother, he said, then something is not working. Because God's love is not a self-love in terms where it's kept to self. God so loved he, all right? So if God loves, makes him give, then if he is in you, it should make you give. That's the acid test, okay? So, so if his love is operating in me, then I'm going to give. Now, this is what we're going to get into. The giving, the words come in what we call degrees. As you grow, you ought to give or you ought to show some action. So part of growth in our minds is my the increase, the increase of my giving. Giving of myself, 
given more love, given more patience, given more kindness. That is an increase that you're spiritual and not carnal. So you can be saved, and that means the flesh is dictating and the spirit is not dictating. Hello, it's called being a carnal Christian. And carnal Christians are really Christians that are still babies. Now, I want to say this because what happens in church is we get a lot of babies asking for high things. Okay? Okay? Babies asking for high things. And so it doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means you're at high demand. You're asking for something you have not grown into yet. And so when it starts to demand certain things from you because there's no discipline to the flesh, then it starts giving off flesh responses. Is that making sense? And it's not just in church. It's anywhere you go. It's just giving off flesh, flesh response. So what the goal of spirituality is discipline. It's going to hurt for you to grow. Only in the church you think there should be no pain. Okay. See, we associate Jesus to no pain, but you can't associate that to Jesus because he had crucifixion. The whole reason you saved is because he went through pain. So the hymn says, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world goes free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. We don't sing them songs no more, but you ought to sing them so that you know that Christ says you ought to take up your cross and follow him. So there's a level of pain to your spirituality. And we have not taught the church to endure pain. So when it hurts, you get carnal because you're not able to press through to grow. So what will happen is you'll, you'll spend 30 years in church and can't get through that threshold of pain. And you'll look back and say, this don't work. No, you're not willing to cross. It's like me going to the gym and say the gym don't work. No, no, no. It can't work if I don't go. And it can't work if I keep quitting every time the instructor increased the weight. And that's what we do. Every time Jesus, okay, <laughs> okay, every time he increased the weight, we quit. There's a level of pain to grow. If you're watching, I want you to type that. There's a level of pain to grow. There's a level of pain. All right? Everybody's looking for, leave it, Pastor, moving on. We look for the easy way out. The hard way sometimes provides the discipline for you to maintain. Hello. Hello. Say amen, somebody. So it's, it's not hard because it's hard. It's hard because it's requiring you to change not only for the result, but your mind to maintain the result. And that's why it's challenging because you're having to change your mind. Okay? So I want you to get that in your soul. So what's happening now is Paul is now moving them from salvation to talk about being a blessing to the body. As he moves them from what God has done for them, He wants them now to do something for the body. In order for that to happen, that's why he addresses the mind. Without your mind, you can't do nothing. Now, this is important. Without your mind, you can't do anything, and God understands that. So what God says, I need to renew your mind so I can get the best service out of you. 
So when you get saved, when I get saved, let's get ready to start. I'm going 1 Corinthians chapter 12 first, and then somebody else can get 1 Timothy. All right? Because we're going to go and make y'all all, all y'all going to stay conscious tonight. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. All right. All right. Uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 1. So, I want 1 Corinthians 12, 2 Timothy 1, all right, because I'm, I'm going to be moving around. Somebody's going to get 2 Timothy 1, and somebody else, and we'll, uh, I think this will be enough, uh, 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. So, I gave, gave you th uh, three. 1 Corinthians 12, all right, we're going to start there. Uh, we're going to do 2 Timothy Chapter 4 and 1 Timothy, I mean, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 1 Timothy chapter 4. All right, so these are going to be our scriptures. I'll make you confident, confident, all right? So I want you to look at some things. Here, here, here we go. 1 Corinthians 12. And, and then we're going to be hopping off to the next, next person that's going to read. We're going we're gonna to have a joint Bible study tonight. All right, this is going to get good. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's start with verse number 1. All right, we're going to look at verse number 1, 1 Corinthians 12, 1. All right, they, they got you. Yes, 1 Corinthians 12, 1. All right, and I want you to get this so you can see this. All right, you with it? All right, let's go. All right, so let's stop. Number one, there is a process of being gifted and ignorant. All right? You, 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 you may be gifted, but there's a level of information you're going to need to flow properly. What we normally do is we take a class, somebody tell you your gift, and then you just run. Okay? The Bible says zeals without knowledge is very dangerous. So, giving things to excited people is not enough. I won't mess with it. Do not give things to people because they're excited. Jesus talked about that in Matthew chapter, uh, uh, Luke chapter, I think it's 8 or 4, when he talks about the different grounds. And one of the grounds that he talked about was stony ground. And in stony ground, they hear the word, and they rejoice over the word, and they're happy, they're happy, they're happy, they're happy. And the Bible says as soon as uh, the tests come for the word, they dry up and wither away. Okay? Because passion is not enough to sustain you. There will be a day that you will not be passionate. In the absence of passionate, you must be disciplined. Every day I don't feel like preaching, but I am disciplined to do my job. There's a discipline to do the job. And everything in your life will demand your discipline, not your excitement. And this is, this is very dangerous because, again, we live in an excitement where you always got to excite so if you ain't standing on top of your head, you know, <laughs> but you got to have some discipline, okay? Because not everything that you have to do will be exciting to get the result. So in the absence of passion or, quote, excitement, there must be discipline. This is, this is what I call Gilgal. Being able to do the same thing over and 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 over again until you make it exciting. Let's go deeper. Until you stop depending on your environment to excite you. I tell people all that since I have to do this, I bring my own joy. You see what I'm saying? I don't depend on you to make this exciting. That's why they laugh at me. If nobody in here, I will enjoy what I do by myself. That's why it's not hard for me to teach online and, and nobody's in the room with me and I'm just as excited as I am. <laughs> 
Only thing I can't do is run around because the camera just. <laughs> but I'm just excited because I am not dependent on you for my joy. You see what I'm saying? I, I, and I wish I had more time digging this. I'll talk about this a little bit more Friday. Because everything in your life is going to... Raising children, discipline. Going to work, discipline. I don't care. You could be excited about the job when you get it. The income, the benefits, and the blah, 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 and the woo, woo, woo. And you'll come in here and you'll testify, God did it. God made a way. And I check you four weeks later. And you'd be like, I don't know if the Lord, the, the Lord really meant for me to have this. Well, I mean, but I mean, last week it was Jesus did it. I mean, he opened up the door. Four weeks later, I just don't know. You know, pray for me. I don't, I just. <laughs> because the discipline is kicking in. <laughs> it's the discipline. You know what I'm saying? You get a new car, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And the maintenance kicking it down. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. You're driving it up to the shop, Jesus. You know. <laughs> but you're just excited. And the excitement fades when the discipline kicks in to maintain. This is why excitement is not enough. Jesus said it this way, count up the calls. Sit down, my, 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 my devotion for the past couple of weeks, the Lord has been saying, sit down and have the hard conversation. Endure them. They are called sober conversations. It takes the drunkenness out. It makes you sit down and really sober up and count up. Do you got what it takes to do it? Do you, do, is there enough in you? When the storm come, when the rain come, when the floods come, will you still be standing? Because there's nothing worse than calling people to you and you vacate. How you bring people all the way out here in the middle of the water and then tell them, do it, get, find your way. <laughs> find your way. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just quit on them. At least if you're going to quit, there's a canoe over here. <laughs> no, I'm, what, what I'm saying to you is what happens is when we get ready to do things, we often don't do them counting up all that it will cost us to do it. And then when it's time for payment, because life is all about writing checks. I, I don't even have enough time to teach this. Life, all of life is living out of your bank account. Not, not, not just the ones you got at the bank bank. The bank of your mind and the bank of your spirit. If you get into something and you know you got low deposits. When it starts to demand things from you, you will be found in the negative. Nobody has to tell me to read my Bible every day. My life writes high checks, which means I got to have a high deposit. So for somebody who can get away with having Bible study once a week, my life demands that I live in his face. So once a week don't work for me. Okay. It, it just doesn't work for me. My life too high. My checks. As soon as I eat, there goes another check. <laughs> so, so if you, I got, I got, I got YouTube in the bathroom. I, I listen to it when I'm getting ready. It is playing in my car. It is, it is something. All I need to eat 
because my life is constantly giving. Some of you are depleted because you don't eat enough for the way you run. You're not tired, you're malnutrition. You do not eat for all of the stuff you have to deal with. See, this is why Paul talks about in Romans to the proportion of your faith. I eat according to my hunger. This is why you, you don't, it don't take all that. Well, you don't got to give all that. I do, so it takes more for me than you, and we good. I don't judge you. You don't judge me. I don't judge you for your, your 30 minute Bible study. Don't judge me for my five hours that I need to stay safe. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment zone. No judgment. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. I just want to know how it's working for you. That's always my new thing. That when people, that, that, you, you don't look peaceful. That's not working for you. Try something different. You don't got to argue with people. Look at the fruit. You look like you're standing on your head. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, this is important. You know that because, see, what happened is you'll become extremely quote unquote, quote unquote, spiritual and you're still not fed enough. The Bible said that Elijah was asleep because he had just finished running from Jezebel who wanted to kill him. And he asked God to go ahead and kill him because he was tired and he was comparing himself to his father's. And the Bible says while he was asleep, the angel came and woke him up and said, eat. He ate and went back to sleep. The angel woke him up again and said, eat. He said, the journey is too great for you. Beware of trying to run past how you feed yourself. Hello, the saints ain't, ain't going to help me today. You, you, you're running on fumes. You're going to be like me. <laughs> you're going to come off that stretch and the car goes going to be out of gas. All anger and frustration and, and bitterness is people who are out of gas. Life has asked them to do something that they have no fuel to do. Whew. Selah. Are y'all with me tonight? Okay, so this, this is important that you grasp this. Now, okay, I was talking about gifts and gifts. See how I wonder off? That's why I need readers. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I got them all spread. Because <laughs> I want to. All right, this is important. This is important. Every gift needs to add to your gift knowledge and wisdom. With every gift, you need to get some knowledge. With the knowledge, you need to get some wisdom. Right? Knowledge and wisdom are two different things. They are not the same. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is how you use it. Smart people still fail because they have no wisdom. You want wisdom. Lord, I know I'm gifted. I know you put it in me. And that's wonderful that you know it. But you're, you're not smart while you know that. <laughs> so, so you want to, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, people don't hire you just for gift alone. They hire you for your knowledge and your wisdom. Your knowledge and your wisdom. Your knowledge. Sometimes you can think you're more valuable than what, and you might be valuable because you live in Jericho. So only you know you that cute. For the rest of us, you look like a stone wall because we can't get in. So you're angry because we can't see a beauty that you won't display. 
So you can't be mad at me because all I see is walls when that's all you give. If you expose some of your beauty, I might change my mind about how hard that wall looks. And I can agree with what's on the inside of you. I am really a nice person. And you might be snookapookums, but but the wall, honey. (laughs) I tell people all the time, faith is for God, works are for people. The only people that know you got faith is God. We know your faith by your works. I won't mess with that. Say that for the the married and single thing. You see what I'm saying? This, This is important. You understand that. And this is why every gift needs to have knowledge and wisdom added to being gifted. Can we go a little deeper? Are y'all with me tonight? All right, all right, uh, uh, let, let's go a little deeper with that. All right, the Bible says, now concerning spiritual gifts, come on, you can pick me back up. I'm sorry, I, I thought, <laughs> you got it, yes, yeah, you, you, you can just keep it with you, it's hot like that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing. Go ahead, let's get good, read. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep reading. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Point two, you can be gifted and follow stupid stuff. Gifting is not a sign of intellect. I wish I had time to teach. Oh, I need about five hours with this. (laughs) Just because you got somebody gifted don't mean you got somebody smart. That's good. Drink me some water. (laughs) Woo! We talking some good stuff tonight. You you see what I'm saying? You know, you know, This is important that you understand that. He says, do you know, as gifted as you were, you followed dumb things? Because giftings doesn't determine what you follow. You, I just, I'm not just following some, I don't want to follow somebody gifted. I need to follow somebody with knowledge and wisdom. And, they, and nobody has all knowledge and nobody has all wisdom. But I got to be with people who are increasing. I wish I had time to teach this. Increasing. Part of the way you know you got somebody who's growing, watch them eat. If what you hang around don't eat, that ain't growing. Nobody wants to see. Hello. This is some good talk tonight. No, no, it's not growing. It's not growing. I am growing. What you ate lately? Because other than that, you're just growing on your own mind, which means you're eating yourself. And all you're doing is taking all you, chew it up, and live off of that again. So you will be back after that dumb idol next week. Because you had no new input. What did you put in you today that was new? What did you meditate on, even if you learned it yesterday, that had an impact on your today? See, law. All right, I'll move on because I, I can't stay here long. Let's read verse, verse 3. Wherefore, because y'all, because you could be ignorant and gifted, and because gifted folk follow dumb stuff, wherefore, which always means because of, I give you what? I give you to understand. I give you understanding. My God, you know what I've been asking the Lord for? Get increase. 
I wish I had time to teach. My understanding. Remember I talked about this Sunday about the understanding. This, this, this is God up here and this is light here and this is me dark. Dia, Dia is this through here, the channel. Nos is my, under, my mind. I need light to shine to my mind. Every day, when I ask the Lord, increase my understanding, I'm literally asking him, shine more light in every area because you're only confused because you're dark. You're only mad because you're dark. You're only uh, 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 upset because you're dark. You only feel like there's no hope because you're dark. The reason God don't feel like you feel because he lives in light. And I need him to shine this light in dark places in my mind so that the light can change my posture. I wish I had time to teach this. Uh, 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 you hold that. I'm going so you and y'all, you, you hold yours. I got another verse that came up. So I'll read that one. <laughs> Woo! Can I show you something? <clears throat> Go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Show you something. Isaiah chapter 60. Everybody on this road going to have a new respect for uh, Sister Robert, Sister Angel, and all them that be reading. <laughs> Trying to read and find the scriptures and write the notes. <laughs> yeah, hello. Ain't nothing wrong with a good stretch. Ain't no I love it. I love it. All right. Isaiah chapter 60. All right. Listen to what it says. Watch this. Arise and shine. Listen to the posture. You get up and you start shining for thy light is come. When light comes, stop sitting there like you ain't seen nothing. And I like that. That's a Holy Ghost Jesus. I'm serious. Y'all don't understand. You have to stop sitting there. See, what happened is God will shine the light and we'll turn our head or we put on shades so it don't shine so bright. <laughs> but God says, when the light come, arise, get up, because you was down there because it was dark. But since I've... I shine something, get, rise, and start beaming out what I just showed you. Just beam out. For the light has come, and watch this, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Whew. See, what, you, what we want, Elder, is we want to see what the shepherds saw. We want angels coming out of heaven and old light. That ain't how your light coming. It comes through these 66. <laughs> I mean, you might get an angel here and there, but God ain't dishing out angels like that. <laughs> the light is in the city. He's going to shine the light. And he says, when I shine it, change your posture. Change your posture. Rise. Rise and start shining. Start shining. Why am I shining? Because your light has come. You're not in the dark anymore. Get up. Stop acting like you're in the dark. Stop acting like you're confused. You're not confused anymore. You're clear. You might not like that light. You may not even agree with that light, but don't dare to call it darkness. That's not darkness. I just don't like what's shining, but beam, beam till I like it. Just shine till I change my mind. Just shine till I'm different. Whatever you do, just keep on shining. Because if he cuts it off, then you go back to darkness. So I want you to shine until it hits my mind, my emotions, and my will. I want you to shine till my soul returns back to where it should be. I want you to shine till I feel right about it. Shine till I think right about it. I want you to shine till I want to do it. 
Whatever you do, don't. David said it like this. Put it another way. Whatever you do, just don't take your spirit from me. It's a whole nother way of saying whatever you do, don't quit shining. Even if I tell you to quit it, don't listen to me because I'm stupid right now. Just keep on shining. You want that. Wherefore, I give you understanding. Lord, give me under, because the devil want me to miss. He wants me to misunderstand. He wants me to put stuff in wrong order. See, the light, you know, you, you, I can't do it up here. You, it, it, you ever worked on something in the dark? You try to find stuff in the dark, try to fix things in the dark. God is the only one. There's a scripture in Isaiah, and the Bible says that darkness and light are the same with God. Darkness is his light. You and I need his light to shine in a, because other than that, you're trying to fix things in the dark. But light lets you Oh, oh no, that go over here. Oh, no, that go over there. And that's what God is doing with your understanding as he flips the switch on. No, 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 no. You're understanding that in darkness. Come here, come here. Bring it over here. Bring it over here. Bring it over here. Sit that right here. Every time I say this, the scripture that always blesses me is Joseph. For all of the bad events that happens to him, from your brothers putting you in the pit, from them selling you down over there to the Midianites, to you coming down here into Pharaoh, for you going into Pharaoh's house and being lied on, from being lied on to being put in jail, for being put in jail to being forgotten about, to being forgotten about to being remembered. The only thing that helps him is his understanding when he sees the people who did it. He is not vengeful. He is not hateful. He said, you did. And the only reason he said it was a point of comfort because they didn't know if he was going to kill them or not because he in power now. He in power, they in famine, and they got to come to him to eat. And this would be a good time if he got a small mind to be vengeful. But he said, calm down. I am not confused about your intent. You did mean it for evil. But God, who is higher than your intentions, has sent me, meant it for good by sending me ahead of you to preserve the prosperity of his people. You were inconvenienced, Joseph, but God was behind the whole thing even though he used their maliciousness. Never be confused. People can be whoever they want to be, but can nobody beat what God trying to do in your life. This is why the Bible keeps saying to us that you are not to be alarmed by the weapons or the uh, 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 the weapons that the enemy forms. They do form, and sometimes they look like they work because it works for God. But it takes a minute to catch up in your understanding. So that you don't feel what you thought you felt that you could have felt because whew, light has come. How much light you got on that situation? Oh, yeah, my son. I'm sorry. I just got to. How much light you got on that situation? Is that a dark conclusion? Oh, yeah. Or is that a light conclusion you could just draw? Is that something that you're figuring out in the dark? Or have you asked the Holy Ghost to help you? Wherefore, I give you, I'm about 1 Corinthians 12, I'm sorry. I'm about, are y'all with me tonight? 
and I forgot y'all can ask questions, but wherefore I give you understanding? <laughs> wherefore, wherefore I give you to understand? We back First Corinthians twelve, verse number three. Are y'all with me tonight? All right, y'all learning tonight. Let's keep digging deeper. This gets deeper. Wherefore I give you understanding? Now, none of this stuff that I'm talking to y'all about was in my notes to talk about because I'm supposed to be getting only to a point that I was trying to make. I ain't at my point yet, but keep reading. <laughs> Wherefore, yeah, help, yeah. I'm sorry. You got it? All right, let's go. Wherefore, I give you to understand uh -huh. that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. If, you, if you're reading this verse, un, right, uh, and if you are taking notes, right, understanding equals discernment. Discernment is not just feeling. Understand how it's called standard. You're able to judge a thing by standard. Understanding equals increase of discernment. The more I understand, the less likely I'm like to be a fool. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. The more, the more I increase in understanding, you, you, another word for understanding, discernment, wisdom. Mm -hmm. The more I know what to do, when to do, and how to do. That's why the Bible says wisdom is what? The principal thing, but in all you're getting, get what? Understand. Understanding. People want to know what to do without understanding what they're doing. Mm, that's good right there. <laughs> you need to understand what you're doing before you decide what you're going to do. As much as lies within you. All right? Uh, what? I know where I am. I'm just tempted to add another scripture in. <laughs> I know where I am. I just, I just want to read it. <laughs> just, it, it, it just to further the point. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm just going to salute it. Then I'll come back. <laughs> Are y'all with me to, tonight? You're learning? All right, this is important. <clears throat> now, what I'm teaching is about gifts, but what I'm teaching you can be used in every area of your life. Okay? All right? Ephesians chapter 5. Uh-oh. Get back to Ephesians. I was telling them at the South Side Church. At the South Side Church. I think I told them to turn somewhere and I couldn't find that book to save my life. Only thing it saved me is I know what King James said by itself. <laughs> it was one of the problems. You get up here sometimes, your mind go blank. You be the, I know you in here. <laughs> I read you yesterday. <laughs> anyway, Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. And y'all just wave at me if we have questions or anything. Ephesians chapter 5. Or if you have questions in here, there's, there's a mic right here. But Ephesians chapter 5. Look, listen to this. Verse number uh, 13, 14. Ephesians 5, 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth. Arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you now, what I just did to you, which is proved throughout Scripture, just in different verses, how you ought to respond to light. Nobody getting light is still laying down. <laughs> so, all right, so watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. It says, see then, see then, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. When I shine the light, see then that you walk careful. I, I cut on the light so you wouldn't keep tripping over. Shande. Sotoboho shata. Ay, 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 ay. I turned on the light so you didn't keep tripping. I'm tired of you tripping. You're tripping because you're in darkness. I don't want you tripping no more. God, let me tell you the strength of light. If the light shines right, he don't have to move the object. You could just step over it. See, what understanding teaches you is that you don't have to have everything move because wisdom teaches you how to maneuver around it. You are more skilled. 
because stuff ain't got to go nowhere. He's giving you so much light. You maneuvering around that, coming through that, and folk trying to ask, how you got through that? The wisdom and the light of God. Just say, Lord, give me light. Oh, y'all ain't say it like you mean. Say it like you mean. Say, Lord, give me light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Just walk around your house and say, let there be light. If you tripping over something right now, let there be light. If you're tripping over anything right now, anything that got you stumbling, just let there be light. Don't, don't ask for the devil to be moved. Let him stay right there. Oh, I know how to come against you. I know how to go around you now. Let there be Let there be light. And see then, once he give it, that you start walking like you're in the dark. <laughs> All right? There's a responsibility to light. So see then that you don't walk like you've been in the dark anymore. The Bible says, what you're going to do? Why am I turning on the light? Because I want to redeem the time. Oh, this is too good. I done got too happy. I'm trying to get to you, brother. A good way I am. But, 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 but light, light will make you bye-bye time. When God shines your light, I don't care how many years you've been a fool, he can shine the light so good that he'll make you buy back opportunities that you miss, things that you was in the dark. When that light come on, he will help you maneuver around it. You don't have to be bitter about any years you lost. You never have to be bitter about any time that you played the fool because your God is a restoring kind of God. This is why when you get to know your God, you don't have to be angry and upset because he will restore to you the years. He's not just restoring days. He restores years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and anything else that took from you can't take. And he's so good because not only does he restore but he will let the former rain stuff you miss and the latter rain hit you at the same time and he can bless you in one day and that one day of blessing will make up for 50 years of pain. And I know it's the truth. Your blessing don't have to equal the years you suffer. He can bless you in one year and make you forget about everything you went through last year because he's God. Shine the light. Shine the light. Shine the light. Shine the light so I can redeem the time. Shine the light so I don't miss no more time. Shine the light. Shine it bright. I want you to shine it so bright with my blind self so I see all of it. All of it. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Because you got so much evil in the day, you need light. There's so much evil in one day. I ain't even talking about what you've been through. In one day, the Bible says sufficient is the evil of the day. There's enough day to, enough evil today for you to have to deal with before you have to deal with next week, next year, year after next. You have to learn how to put your mind on a limit. I've got to close it. You got to learn how to put your mind on a diet. You got to tell your mind, I'm not in next year right now. Glory. I don't got light for next year, so next year ain't for me to think about. I will only meditate where the light is. If the light haven't shined the next year, we're going to let God shine the next year. I pray and let the Lord deal with next year. Right now, I'm only, re only responsible for where he shined the light. Where there is no light, that's not my responsibility. I don't, I, I don't, I don't need to know what's over there. I don't even care what's over there. Because if you want me to know, he'll shine the light. And since he ain't shine no light, it ain't none of my business. Put your mind on the diet. Put your mind on the diet. You're stressed because you're trying to figure out the unknown. The unknown ain't your business. It's not your business. You have a problem minding your business. <clears throat> you're nosy. 
You're in God's business. You're in God's business. He didn't ask you. That's why you can't do today. Because you're trying to handle tomorrow. And God's attitude is, you, don't, you, you ain't doing well with the day. Why you need to know tomorrow? <laughs> today has stressed you out. If you knew what was getting ready to happen tomorrow, you'll stroke out. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about good, bad stuff. Because good blessings will overwhelm you. And you be all stressed, eat biting nails on something good like something bad. <laughs> Trust the Father that he knows how much light you can take. Are you with me tonight? All right. Verse 17 is where I was trying to get to the whole time I was reading this. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand, there go that word again, what the will of the Lord is. Lord, shine the light and give me understanding. Shine the light and give me understanding. All right? All right, let me finish this real quick. Now, all I was trying to get to in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that wasn't none of the stuff I was trying to get to. What I was trying to tell y'all about is that there are diversities of gifts. That's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to. So, so once you got all of that situated, he begins to say something to you. All right, I, I get, yeah, I got about 10 minutes to wrap this up. There are diversities of gifts, all right? And, and, and I want you to look at this, verse number four, mm-hmm. all right? So we understand, number one, we have gifts. Number two, we don't want to be ignorant with our gift. We want to have what? Knowledge and wisdom because we don't want to be gifted and led with dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we want discernment while we're gifted. Yes, sir. Discernment. Discernment. Some people keep talking about, they so gifted. Let me tell y'all something. Mm -hmm. You ever ask yourself, and I'll move quick. But this goes to the point I'm making. You ever ask yourself how Solomon was the wisest man, according to Scripture. God, watch this. This is going to bless you. He was the wisest man that has ever walked the earth. According to the Scripture, God said to him that there has never been one as wise as him, and there will never be another one after him. Mm. That's according to Scripture. Ain't that what that Bible say? All right. So there's only one Solomon. Don't pray for him because you can't. He just said there ain't going to be another one after him. All right. That's it. Now. Now, now that you got that, have you ever asked yourself how such a smart man that was full of wisdom kept doing dumb things with the strange women? Can I go, can I go deeper? There is a difference between the gift of wisdom, which is what he got. He got a gift. But again, gifting doesn't always affect the giver's mind. Mm. <sighs> this is why you can be a gifted in what you do and be crazy as a person. Yeah. <laughs> That's not impossible. Only in our society we think giftings equal intelligence. It does not. You can have a gifted crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they get str- that boy was... I got to close. He was gift. That wisdom was on him. To the, to the, the first test he got was there was two prostitutes living in the king's palace. Both of them had a baby. One of them rolled over on the baby and killed their baby. Slipped into the other one's bed and stole, oh, his, baby. stole her baby and put it up mm. in her, her, her bed. And they had to go to them, and he said, they said, hey, she stole a baby. There's no DNA. He can't, can't, he can't take this to DNA. DNA ain't exist. How you going to figure this out? The wisdom of God. He said, bring me a sword. He says, and I'll cut the baby in half. And the Bible says that the mother, the real mother, I wish I had time to teach it. That's a Mother's Day's message. The real mother said, give the baby away. Right. Selfless, yes. And Solomon, and the other girl, she was fine. Cut him in half. You know why? She already lost hers. But the wisdom, 
that have helped to discern a mother's love. Because when you got something you love, that kind of that that's the reason that that joker had. Yet God said to him, "I done told you about these crazy people." Because wisdom, the gift of wisdom, the gift, the gift does not equal intelligence. People be all kinds of strong. They're gifted. They're gifted. They're gifted. And they're crazy. That's because the gift has not even affected them. And if, we, if the church taught this a little bit more, you won't be shocked at a lot of stuff. It, it's not nothing to be shocked about. It, it, it's not an, and this is why the church is so big about being used but not changed. Because your gifting will give you an audience, but your character and the wealth of your human spirit or what he puts on the inside of you through the Holy Spirit is what helps you to get along with the stuff that he gives you. So if you never work on you, he, your gift might pull stuff to you that your character will tear up. The devil didn't tear that up. You did. This is important that you understand. So I must work as hard on my gift as I do myself. This is why Paul kept saying that renewal of the mind is so important. You keep, you keep trying to tell me your gift and I keep asking you, how well is your mind? <laughs> because here's the deeper part. You will only get as much of the gift as the mind of the person. That thing could be loaded. You ain't going to get but 20%. Because depending on the character, that controls the faucet. You, you, you see what I'm saying? It don't matter how gifted of a teacher I am. If the faucet of discipline don't make me show up to teach, then all that is in me is riding down the street. So, so my gift didn't make me come up here. Okay, I'm done. My gift is just what you're giving. My discipline made me come up here. Not my gift. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, finish this. There, there are different gifts, and I, I got to close my time up. Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah. All right, verse 4, 6, 1 Corinthians 12, 4, and we'll stop here. I, I was trying to get the Timothys <laughs> to the Timothys. <laughs> But I did good, saints, because I stayed <laughs> on the straight line. I stayed on the straight line. I stayed on the straight line. <laughs> give the pastor a little credit. You watch and give him a little clap and the stuff. <laughs> I, stay, I stayed on the straight line. I ain't zigzagging. <laughs> Pray for the pastor. I'm going to close with this. Y'all remind me, this is where we go at the next Tuesday. <laughs> All right, this is important. All right, uh, here it is. There are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. So look at somebody said, we got different gifts. We have different gifts. All right, that's one. Number uh, two in verse five, there are diversities of what, sis? You can go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm doing this. Okay. Uh-huh. And there are differences of administrations. All right. So but, now watch this. You got gifts. Mm -hmm. Then you got offices. Mm -hmm. All right. And th that's what administration means. Administration is simply mean there are different offices. Mm -hmm. now, now, this is important. And I, I, I want to say this so you can get a picture. My office is an elder or a pastor in the Lord's church. But that's not all of my gifting. When I show up to my office, all of my gifts shows up with me. Mm -hmm. 
So if I have a gift of hospitality, a gift of this and a gift of that, a gift of that, when they put me in the office, then I bring all my gifts to that office and decorate it. People think this is why every pastor is not the same. Because every pastor don't have the same giftings. We're all striving for the same fruit. But we don't all have the same giftings. So there are people in their ability to even teach and articulate the word that are good teachers. Then there are people who have got the art of preaching. They preach real well. They're, they're different because our, our, our giftings are different. Well, that's the same gifting that gets into, let me do, say this right here real quick. The gifts, the offices, and the last one is the what? The next verse after that. Okay, it's, but the same Lord. Same Lord. And, uh -huh. and there are diversities of operations. There, that's what I want. There are diversities of operation. This is where I'll close that tonight. We all can have the same gifts, but function differently with them. That's operation. Okay, what you get from me when I do what I do is a mixture of my gifting and my personality. Mm -hmm. My personality comes across in my gifting. Part of what makes me uniquely me in my gifting is my, my spin on what I do, which is sourced out of my personality. So my personality mixed with the gift and the anointing is what we call charisma. Mm -hmm. Where you get charismatic. Charisma is my grace. So what I do, I do with ease. If you try to be me, you won't get that ease. You, you won't get that ease. And, 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 and I've got to stop with this uh, tonight. This is, this is why making people like you is not good. <laughs> I'm close. Come get it. I used to do this a long time ago, but I ain't mean that right because it's still in my head. <laughs> but I'm going to close with this to, to, to put a little tease in your mind for Friday when I talk to the engaged married people that I got singles people next Friday. Show you something. The question is do you love your spouse? Or do you love what you're trying to make them be? You might be changing their operation and making them something God didn't. You can be in love with the idea of a thing and not the thing. Come back Friday, I'll tell you something else. <laughs> you can't come, you watch, it'll be online. Let me tell you this. And when you love the idea, nine times out of ten, you're still loving yourself. Because your idea suits you, not them. For most of us, you ain't never loved your spouse. You've been in love with yourself the whole marriage. God bless you. I will see you. <laughs> We're going to close on today. We appreciate you coming in and receiving God's holy word. <laughs> it's the problem you having in church because you're trying to make everybody like you. Because suddenly you're the standard. And if they become like what you want, then it's easy on you to love because you're selfish. And you don't love anybody but your... God bless you all tonight.
We appreciate your love and your patience to receiving the word, and I'm doing good because it ain't living. All right. <laughs> I'm saved. I'm, saved. I'm trying to stay saved. I backslid last week, but I came back. I came back. I came back. I came back. I, came back. I got y'all at 8 30, but I'm coming. Okay. God bless you. Listen. We, we enjoy you. Please, uh, if you're watching with us, uh, join us on Friday. It's going to be good Friday, good next Friday. It, we, we're going to be in it. We're going to be in it. And we're going to share with you all that God has poured out to share with us um, on Friday. Uh, and, and we appreciate you on tonight. Listen, if you're watching, type a one-liner in of something that you got out of the lesson on tonight. Share it on the Facebook. Share it on your page. Let everybody know what you received out of the Word that can be a blessing to somebody else on tonight. Tonight, let's get prepared to give and share in our giving on tonight. Let's do that on tonight. We we'll thank you for all of you, the members and the visitors, and all of you that share in giving with us on, on our Tuesday night services and Friday night and Sundays to help keep the work of the Lord going on. And so we tithe here in the Lord's church. We give 10% of our tithe and we give him an offering. And so we do it every week when we ask you to pray and ask the Lord what he wants you to give and share in the Lord's house. So if you would take a minute, pray, ask the Lord what he wants you to give and share on tonight and be a blessing. The information is on the screen so that you can uh, share with us on tonight. Amen. God God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. They, uh, we got an announcement coming, and then they're going to, uh, yeah, Brother Carlos is coming, yeah, and then he's go, they're going to uh, get ready to close us out. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Give God a praise. Amen. If you need assistance, amen, on tonight, they will help you. The ushers are there to help you in giving on tonight. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for the word on tonight. Amen. Wasn't that rich? On tonight, hallelujah, we really thank God for our pastor. And in that same vein, October is Clergy Appreciation Month. Amen? Amen? When you receive word like that, it makes it easy when these times of the year come around. We know that we get a rich word here in this house. We know that we are properly and adequately fed. Amen? If we walk out of here and, and make waste of it, that's our fault. That's our fault. It's not because we were not provided with what we need. This says, let the elder that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. First Timothy 5 and 17. This is to our RLCM, our Life Point family, our family, our friends, our frequent watchers. Amen. Our secret members, whoever you are, if you want to be a blessing, if you have been blessed by the word of the ministry of our very own pastor, Dr. Irvin Alexander Jones, uh, we ask that you would just be a blessing. Help us honor him by bringing a card with a monetary gift or a cash app uh, to dollar sign EAJ3. And we're doing this all throughout the month. Amen. So if you don't have it today, it's okay. If you don't have it next week, it's okay. We're doing this throughout the month, and we definitely want to be a blessing. We want him to know that we appreciate the sacrifice that it takes to stand behind the sacred desk and give us the word of God. Amen? Amen. We're going to stand, and we're going to dismiss on tonight. Okay. Okay. All right. Elder Hudson is coming, and he's going to dismiss us on tonight. Amen? You thank our Father God for such a rich word on tonight. And Lord, please replenish our bishop. Lord, give an added strength. And Lord, yes, Lord, make his way easy. And Lord, meet his need in every area of his life. And Lord, bless the members here. I pray for the well-being of them as well. Lord, that we all may be one. And we all may, you may be pleased, Lord, and our service towards you through the teaching you, that you are giving us through our bishop. We thank you. We love you. And Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And have a great night.